In this unit, we're making a transition from the first half of the course to the second half of the course. In the first half of the course, we spoke about philosophy in what I think of as a series of horizontal uh, dimensions. What we did was we took philosophy as a discipline and broke it down to four kinds of sub-questions. And I've got them arrayed here uh, on the board. Metaphysics, epistemology, issues of human nature, and ethics. And then what we did was we took each of those branches and we had a unit where we looked more in depth at one major issue. We looked at one major issue uh, in metaphysics, then one major issue in epistemology, and then the same for human nature and for ethics. And along the way, we sketched some implications for, for educational practice. Now, when we did the issue in metaphysics, the, uh, the issue that we singled on was the big divide in the history of philosophy between those who approach metaphysics naturalistically, that is to say, they see the universe as a self-contained, self-governing uh, system, the natural world, and that we can explain in principle uh, the way the world works without reference to God or the, uh, the gods or, or any sort of a higher supernatural uh, realm. And the position uh, at the other end of the spectrum here that denies that, that says, if we're going to understand the universe we uh, have to understand it uh, in terms of its creation, its organization, perhaps its ongoing maintenance by a, uh, a power or powers superior to the natural world. Now, when we presented the issue uh, in the, the metaphysics unit, we presented it in fairly polarized form, stri uh, strengthening the contrast between naturalism and, uh, and supernaturalism. That uh, is a legitimate but also a controversial way of presenting the issues. And so what I've done is arrayed the uh, two positions here along a spectrum because there are, of course, those who will uh, argue that it's not necessary to polarize the two positions, but there are compromise positions or integration positions between the naturalist position and the supernaturalist position. And so there are people who end up taking uh, metaphysical positions all along the spectrum, those who are strongly naturalistic, those who are strongly supernaturalistic, and then various uh, combination positions that uh, stake out territory trying to combine naturalism and supernaturalism in varying ways. So we don't want to prejudge that issue. When we did epistemology, again, we presented a, a polarized debate. Uh, at one end of the spectrum, we presented arguments and analyses uh, uh, based on a, a strong advocacy of reason, arguing here that the way we come to know the important things in life is through the, the use of reason. Uh, we do uh, observing the world, we classify the world, uh, we, uh, we run experiments, and then in sophisticated forms we will run uh, uh, scientific experiments and use the, the, the apparatus of scientific method. And then, and only then, to the extent that we've gone through those processes, uh, do, we, do we come to know right, important truths about the universe. And then at the other end of the spectrum, we emphasized a, a position that's a strong faith position, arguing that the important uh, truths that we need to know or important beliefs that we have to have come uh, to have about the world are either not accessible by reason or are contradicted by reason, but nonetheless they are things that we should believe, and so we should make a faith commitment to, uh, to come to, to believe those things as well. And again, when we did the epistemology unit, we presented those in fairly strong contrast to each other, but again, there are people who try to combine reason and faith in various ways, and so we'll leave that as an open project here uh, and just say there's a spectrum uh, of, of positions possible from advocacy of reason uh, purely to faith purely or any combination right along the way. When we did issues in human nature, uh, we presented three positions in contrast to each other. Uh, at one end of the spectrum, we had a position we called uh, reductive materialism. This position, as the name right, suggests, says that human beings are purely material, uh, anything that we might want to call a soul or a consciousness or a mind, we uh, reduce it to underlying material processes. We don't uh, explain them in their, in their own terms or see them as a, a different kind of thing or as any sort of an emergent property that needs uh, additional explanation. Instead, we can speak purely the language of uh, material processes. The other end of the spectrum, we had the traditional dualist position called dualism, arguing that the physical side and the psychological side of our natures are uh, two different uh, and in some cases opposed uh, kinds of stuff that happen to, 
conjoin uh, or be conjoined for uh, for a temporary period while we're living here on this earth. Then uh, we had a third position that we presented here, and I'm going to uh, put it in the middle uh, and called it integrationism. And as the name suggests here, we need to see from this perspective uh, the human psychology and the human physique, right, as an integrated, uh, codependent, interdependent, co-functioning system that for purposes of analysis, you can talk about the psychological independently from the physical and vice versa. But in reality, it's, a, uh, it's an integrated system and has to be uh, explained on those terms. In ethics, we did a similar thing. At one end of the spectrum, we uh, spoke about an uh, approach to values and the good life uh, called predation, right? arguing that we do live in a, a zero-sum universe, that human beings are fundamentally in conflict with each other. And so it's a matter of the, uh, the strong prevailing over the weak and making sure that one is either not uh, a weak person uh, and so setting oneself up for being a victim and cultivating in oneself the predatory traits that will enable you to succeed in, in that kind of, uh, kind of a world. Other end of the spectrum, we developed a position called it altruism, uh, this ism. Uh, as a matter of principle, arguing that one is a good person only to the extent one does not right, uh, do what's in one's self-interest instead. One always considers the other or the altar, uh, and it's, the, 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 it's one's service to others or sacrifice to others that marks one's goodness uh, as, a, as a human being. And then a third position, uh, I'm going to uh, put a dotted line here because I don't really think it's a compromise between the two, but nonetheless it, uh, it agrees with some things on the predation model and some things on the, uh, on, the, uh, on the altruism model and disagrees also fundamentally with both of them. This is the position that we called egoism. And the egoists argue that human beings should pursue their happiness, should pursue their own lives, their lives as, uh, as their, their standard of value and goodness uh, to be achieved, but that human beings should recognize other people's equal legitimate interest in doing so, and to the extent that we have social interactions with each other, it shouldn't be a matter of sacrificing other people to oneself or sacrificing oneself to other people, but rather working out mutual trade or mutually beneficial uh, relationships. Okay, that was the, uh, what I think of as broadly as the first unit of the course, uh, plunging in and getting familiar with doing metaphysics, doing epistemology, doing human nature, and doing ethics. Now, there are lots of other sub-issues in all four of these categories that we uh, did not talk about at all or we had glancing uh, discussions of as we went through. Uh, instead, uh, we did a trade-off for depth on some of these issues uh, uh, in order to cover them in some depth. Some of the other issues that come up we will see as we go through the semester and start to consider philosophy, uh, what I'm now going to call vertical philosophy. This is philosophy arrayed horizontally. Uh, what we're now going to do is turn to what I call isms. Uh, like idealism and realism and pragmatism and the others that we will be looking at this semester. Uh, and what an ism is, is a system of philosophy where the philosopher or the philosophers as a school have gone through the metaphysical issues and staked positions on all of the major metaphysical issues. They've done the same for the epistemology, the human nature, and the ethics. So there might be 40, 50, 60, or 70 major uh, issues in philosophy that one has to consider. One takes a position on all of them and then puts them together in a package, hopefully an integrated package or a consistent uh, and coherent package. But that then becomes a whole philosophy, uh, a philosophy of life or a philosophy of the universe. And then that philosophy is given a, a label. So what we're then going to be looking at are positions, right, that are integrated positions. Uh, of all of the sub-issues. So the isms take a position on metaphysics, they take a position on epistemology, human nature, and so forth. It may be, for example, that they are naturalistic in their metaphysics, or they advocate a kind of faith in their epistemology and integrationism in, uh, in human nature, but uh, predation in, in ethics. And another ism might take another different set of positions, uh, and so they, they uh, as packages, disagree with each other.